Hi, I'm Eva Chen, and this is a glimpse into my life as editor-in-chief of Lucky Magazine. I grew up in New York City and I am a first generation American. Uh, my parents moved to the US from Taiwan in the 70s. And I think like many uh, first generation Americans uh, and children of immigrants, you know, I think there was a very strong emphasis put on uh, careers such as engineering, law, uh, finance and medicine. But the summer between junior and senior year, I took an internship at uh, Harper's Bazaar, another fashion magazine. And basically it was my light bulb moment. I really realized that what you do as your career and what you do as a job didn't have to feel like work. It could feel like a passion project. So I worked at Elle magazine for three years and uh, Teen Vogue, which is the little sister to Vogue magazine for seven and a half in the beauty department. And then um, I took some time off and was living in Los Angeles before I ended up here at Lucky. I usually get up at a, between 6 and 6.30. Breakfast is my most favorite meal of the day. So I always have breakfast, usually one and a half breakfasts. So my beauty routine is pretty low maintenance. It's like slap on some sunscreen, slap on some makeup, and usually dash out the door. I take cabs to work almost every day, which sounds terribly indulgent. Usually we'll post an Instagram on the way to work, a tweet on the way to work, retweet something from Lucky. I'm usually in the office anywhere between 9 and 9.30. Um, and that's it. Most of the day is like you're sitting on your chair responding to emails. It's as normal as working as what I imagine working at like any other big institution is. And it's certainly there are aspects of it that are more glamorous. That comes in kind of like, like bursts. They're like exclamation points when the rest of the sentence is pretty much what you would expect. There are so many stereotypes and so many misperceptions about the fashion industry and the magazine industry in particular. I mean, if you believe what you see in the Devil Wears Prada, Ugly Betty, 13 going on 30, like I literally would be kind of just taking things off the fashion closet racks and just wearing them home, never giving them back. My whole life would be like some sort of black tie gala. It's so interesting to me that the industry is just plagued by these stereotypes when really it's like the fashion industry is like it's exactly that it's an industry it's a business and it's one that's changing in such an interesting and dynamic way the way digital now informs fashion and how they're influenced by each other and how you know you can watch an entire fashion show the Louis Vuitton show through Instagram videos these days I think we're living in an age right now where people want a sense of personality and also they want a sense of something being personal if I were 15 years old or 20 years old and I were interested in fashion, and I could follow an editor-in-chief on Instagram, see where she was traveling to, what she was traveling with, what she was wearing. I think that's pretty different, and that sense of approachability is really important in the magazine and also on my social media. Like, I post once a week, usually, like, all the beauty products I finished. And then once a week, I usually get at least 100 questions, like, what do you think about this? This is my skin type. And it's like, I genuinely, I genuinely want to help people when they ask me questions. If a friend texts you a question, you want to answer them. And I feel the same way about social media. I want it to be a conversation. Um, and, and I think that genuinely, it's like, Lucky is the magazine that we, we want to help you shop and find your style. My approach to Lucky, I've kind of been selfish about creating this magazine for myself. Every month I just want it to be kind of speak to the person who loves to shop the way I do. I mean, the way I shop basically is always this weird, mad mix of high street and then um, high end. Someone else might look at my outfit and say, okay, hate the shoes, love the jacket, hate the skirt, and like they'll be able to take one thing and create their own. But there are still many magazines that are very dictatorial where they'll say, this is in, this is out nothing in between. And I just don't think the average 20-something or 30-something wants to shop that way. You, you don't want to be told, like, wait, the jacket that you bought last season that you spent $1,000 on, now it's out. Like, banish it. Throw it out. And, and whereas, for me, when I spend money on something, it could be $50, it could be $500, or it could be $1,000, I will basically wear it until it falls off my body. Literally, until it, like, just spontaneously drops off my body, and I'm like, oh my god, I broke it. Um, you know, but I think that's how people shop that these days, and it's strategic, and it's thoughtful. I don't think I'll ever reach a point where I'm like, okay, we've done it. 
now this is the formula, let's stick to it. There, there are very few things in the magazine that we're gonna do every single issue. Because that, I, I, I feel like readers want to be surprised, they want to find new things, they want always to kind of, like I, I always want it to be kind of a testing ground. And I, I, I want to think of Lucky as kind of almost always being in a very polished beta, you know, where it's like they're, they're, it will always be changing and evolving and always like reflecting what the reader wants. Mm -hmm.